Hi, this is David Doss for Motu. Here's 10 power user tips for editing in the sequence editor. First tip, here's how to fix a note that's slightly out of time. My drummer here made a little mistake. Have a listen. First, what I need to do is switch my grid off. By default, the grid is on the quarter notes. Then, I'll come back to the offending note, hold down the C key to temporarily get the scissors tool, make a snip immediately before and after the note, then release the C key. Click on my new separated sound bite and use the arrow keys to nudge it onto the grid. Once I have it in place, I want to make sure it's seamless, so I'll drag the sound bite edge over, put the seam where I want it to be, then select the seam and put a crossfade over it. I like equal power fades, and I usually do about 10 milliseconds to make it imperceptible. Have a listen. You can do the same thing across multiple mics, for example, a multi mic drum kit. Here's such a kit, and let's say, just as an extreme example, we'd actually like to move this snare drum hit later by a full eighth note. Have a listen to this pattern, and I'll show you how to do it. First, I'll roughly select the entire area of beat 4, making sure to get as close as possible to that snare hit without touching its attack. I drag a box around that, and then I hit command Y, which is the split command. It makes a new separate region out of my selection. Then let's go to the ruler and switch it to the 8th note. Now if I hit the right arrow key, whatever is selected is going to move to the right by an 8th note. Now all I have to do is drag the edge back. It's a little tricky because continuity is so important with an acoustic instrument like drums. I'll use Ctrl F to crossfade over the seams, and let's take a listen to the result. Here's how to fix a note that's out of pitch. Here's a phrase from a lead vocal. Have a listen to it all natural first. I'll take what I've got and move on. Astute ears will hear that the word I've is a little bit sharp. It's really easy to fix this in DP. First, let's use some horizontal zoom to focus in closer. I'm tapping the command right arrow to increase horizontal zoom. Next, go to the layers menu, the one that shows sound bites by default, and switch into the pitch layer. These bars and lines are the pitch analysis that DP does by default. If you'd like it to be bigger, grab the magnifying glass and drag right. Now, take one more listen and we'll find the offending note. I'll take what I've got and move on. Right there. Now all you have to do is grab it and drag it to where you want it to be. DP will automatically snap it to the nearest half step. If you prefer to fine tune it, hold down the command key as you drag. Now have a listen to the newly tuned version. I'll take what I've got and move on. Flying, in studio parlance, is the process of taking one piece of material and copying it, flying it, to another part of the song. Take a look at the song I've got playing here. There's a verse at measure 2 and a chorus at measure 6. Let's say I want to fly a copy of the verse so that it follows the chorus. That's very simple to do. Since we know we want to move this by measures at a time, let's put the grid on whole notes. Next, hold the C key like we did before to make a cut at measure 6. Then hold down the Option key, which is always a shortcut that means copy, and drag the sound bite at measure 2 to measure 13. There you go. The verse is now flown. Nowadays it's pretty common to fly non-lead parts, for example background vocal layers or a signature riff, around a song, since it saves a lot of time and you only have to record it right once. Here's a clever way to thicken up an existing part if you have enough raw material. Have a listen to the verse of this commercial jingle. That electric guitar at the beginning is a little bit thin, but I notice that it's just two measures repeated twice. I'm going to highlight the electric guitar track and go to the project menu and choose duplicate track. Then in the duplicate track, I'm going to hold down the C key at the halfway point at measure four to split that sound bite into two regions. And I'm going to swap the two halves, moving the second half to the first and the first half to the second. That way I've created an artificially doubled part. 
I'll hit Ctrl F to crossfade over my seams, and I'll also pull up the mixer, Shift M, and hard pan those two guitar tracks to opposite sides. If I want to get creative, I could even alter the amps, pedals, and tones on the double track. But let's have a listen. Here's a quick bonus tip. We could create a delayed effect by moving the doubled part and eighth note off. You could either do that using the grid like we did before, or you could select the sound bites and use the edit menu's shift command and tell it to move the selected items later by 240 ticks. There's 480 ticks in a quarter note, so 240 is half of that. Here, I'm going to insert a little automation into a track in the sequence editor. Here's two measures before the entrance of the bass guitar. Have a listen. I can see from the channel strip that the bass guitar is already set to negative 12 dB, but I'd like that first entrance to pop a little bit more. So I'll go to the insert menu and choose volume. The cursor changes to a pencil, and I can insert my negative 12 dB just so I make sure the track is anchored there where I left it. And now, I can insert other points, and DP will connect them smoothly. Now the line is dotted. That's because automation is disabled by default. So I'll click on the automation button, hit play, and now it's activated. So here's the new automated bass guitar. If I want to get more creative, I can double tap the P key, P is for pencil, and now draw freehand curves. Double tap the A key, A for arrow, to get back to the regular arrow tool. I can also automate just about anything I want using the same technique, volume, pan, mute, and every parameter of every available plugin that's on that track. If you're working in a dense mix and you notice that just one note is too loud or too soft, there's another way of adjusting volumes, bite gain. Let's say, for example, that I decide while listening that this one note here is too loud. I'll hold down the C key to temporarily get my scissors tool, then make a cut before and after it. Then select that sound bite and either go to the audio, bite volume and gain, set bite gain command, or the shortcut is also here right in the info strip. All sound bites default to zero dB. So if I drag downward or type in a new value, I can adjust the volume of just that one note. Then I'll select the entire area and crossfade over the seams so that it plays smoothly. When I record audio, I always keep overdub mode on, which means new audio gets added as a new layer over the previous layers. Layers can go as deep as you want them to. This gives me a lot of flexibility later. Here I'm recording a new bass part over an old bass part that I wasn't too crazy about. Once the recording's done, I can move the mouse to the edge of the new soundbite and peel back the layer until I find the right splice point. I'll do that at the end of this take too. Then, let's say I played a bad note at measure 29. If I double click in the soundbite, select that note and hit the delete key, I'll get rid of just that top layer, revealing the layer underneath it. Then of course, I'll select this entire area and crossfade to make it seamless. If you're in the business of making commercials, you'll enjoy this one. Here's a quick disclaimer voiceover I recorded. The car manufacturer is furnishing this item as is. It does not provide any warranty of the item whatsoever, whether express, implied, or statutory, including... But what if you need this disclaimer to fit within a very short few seconds at the end of a commercial? Just put your mouse in the upper left or right hand corner of the soundbite until you get the time stretch tool that looks like a hand. Then grab the soundbite and drag it to the new length you want it to be. DP can both compress and expand time elastically. The car manufacturer is furnishing this item as is. It does not provide any warranty of the item whatsoever, whether express, implied, or statutory, including but not limited to any warranty of merchantability or fitness for a particular purpose or any warranty that the contents of the item will be error free. Bonus tip, if you experiment with this tool multiple times, DP is smart enough to always refer to the original soundbite to adjust its time, so it doesn't keep degrading the sound by time stretching an already time stretched version. I produced a session in which the singer sang a sustain note but ended a little bit short, and later after the session was over I decided I really wanted that sustain to go all the way to the bar line, the blue line highlighted here. Here's the original vocal. Hollywood. 
This note has some vibrato, which means that both pitch-wise and volume-wise, it's got peaks and troughs. So the key is to try and keep that pattern consistent. First, I'll make sure my grid is off. Then, I'll select the sustain portion of the soundbite, including its release, and then choose Edit Split to make that a separate soundbite. Now, I'm going to option drag the soundbite to the right. The option key tells DP to make a copy instead of just moving the original soundbite. If I need to, I'll use the arrow keys to fine tune the position of the copied soundbite. Then, I'll edge edit to try and match those peaks and troughs as best I can. Finally, a little crossfade, and I have a magically extended note that should be absolutely undetectable once the full track is playing around the vocal. Halloween.